how our stream habitat section prioritizes our, our stream work across the Commonwealth, uh, particularly for today for wild trout systems. Um, as you heard Sean mention, you know, that's one of the, the management tools that we have to protect these wild trout and enhance these populations. So before I go into how we are currently prioritizing things, I'd like to go back and uh, describe how we prioritized things in the past. So um, before 2012, our projects were selected on a first come, first serve basis. It was a very reactive shotgun approach. Uh, the map that you're seeing here is uh, where our completed projects with habitat improvement structures were um, distributed across the Commonwealth. Um, the, the red dots are the projects that were in our um, CHIP program or our Cooperative Habitat Improvement Program, and the yellow dots were in our Technical Assistance Program. In 2012, we uh, went around and met with each area fisheries manager and sat down in their respective regions and determined um, priorities um, in their area for, their, for the wild trout um, that they had in their each AFM region. That resulted in, um, respective resulted in 27 tier one or priority one, and then uh, 18 tier two um, watersheds, so kind of priority two watersheds. We continue to implement um, projects from this list, but we have to realize that it has limitations. It's very subjective, um, and it needed continual maintenance. The distribution of those watersheds um, is here, shown here in green. You can see we, we uh, bettered our distribution across the Commonwealth, but we still had limitations, um, and it was a, a static list that needed uh, continual maintenance. The red dots are showing our completed projects with uh, habitat improvement structures in 2012. So moving into our current prioritization process, um, in 2014, um, the habitat uh, improvement Prioritization work group was formed, um, and that consisted of folks from Division of Fisheries Management, Division of Habitat Management, as well as um, our geospatial technology and business solutions section. Our assignment was to determine the broad objective statewide uh, for fish habitat improvement work on streams and develop a recommendation um, for objective systematic prioritization process for developing stream habitat improvement projects. So there were many variables that, that our group needed to uh, take into consideration while developing uh, this new prioritization process. First, um, as Bob Weber mentioned this morning, we had to take into consideration uh, a, a proactive approach as an agency. We also needed to take into consideration whether or not um, we'd be able to handle reactive approach. Instead of, we, we started looking at other prioritization processes that are out there from other agencies and other non-government organizations to see what, what was working for them and um, so that we weren't trying to reinvent something that might have already been out there. And finally, we looked into the feasibility. Um, we needed to take into consideration the feasibility of these sites. Um, are they treatable? Can we get equipment to them? Um, is there funding available partners? Our goal was protection and enhancement of cold water fishes through habitat improvement on streams. So going back to our original assignment to come up with broad objectives for state managing um, statewide, we, we came up with maintaining or improving class A uh, fisheries or raising the biomass category by at least one level, meaning a B from an A, C to a B, increase the size structure of a population or increase angler use and satisfaction. Another um, objective was to remove sources of impairment from the PADDEP 303D impaired list, and also using uh, EPA's rapid bioassessment protocol to increase the habitat condition score. We needed to come up with our resource focus areas that would um, drive our, our geo decision tool. So these following resource focus areas are going to be the, the data that drives our, uh, our tool that was created. We were looking at uh, trout biomass, um, class A's, B's, C's, and D's. We were looking at areas of high angler use, limestone streams, we were looking at stream sections that were on public lands. We're also um, looking at the, the PADDEP 303D list of impairments um, for treatable sources that we felt we could treat, such as um, sedimentation, ag siltation, things like that. We're also looking at um, stream sections that were class B, C's, and D's that were adjacent to class A's um, you know, in the thought that there would be 
um, a logical solution that we might be able to move them to a class A or extend to class A. So our geospatial um, technology and business solutions section created a geo decision tool for us, primarily re relies on readily accessible data or existing data um, from the Fish and Boat Commission or POSDA. The, re the previously mentioned re resource focus areas um, are weighted by a standardized uh, scoring criteria. And then the outcome um, created a geo decision tool um, that produced a score for each uh, stream section. We came up with um, buckets, priorities one, twos, and threes. But the project still needed to be evaluated using a feasibility flowchart. So I know you're not going to be able to um, visually uh, read everything that's on this, but the point of, of this uh, photo is this is our flowchart that we would use, um, uh, that, our, that our managers would use. It's a yes-no type question to guide our staff to determine whether a pro project should move forward in-house, we should pass it to partners, or if it's something that we should not consider at all. So the outcome of the geo decision tool um, for our wild trout streams is approximately uh, 370 stream sections, which is about 3.6 percent of our all um, all of our stream sections, and this is just for priority one. That equates to about 250 different stream uh, streams across the Commonwealth and 1,450 miles of streams. So there's um, it's a small subset of the streams, but it's a it's a a lot of work to be done on on those waters. This is what that looks like plotted across the, the Commonwealth. The red lines are the priority ones um, in our Fish and Boat Commission commissioner districts. If we bring in the priority twos, the blue lines, um, you can see a lot of them are, are tributaries to priority ones, but they're, you're also seeing um, a similar trend to a lot of the other maps that you've just seen through uh, Sean's presentation um, where a lot of the, the brook trout strongholds are and as well as some of the stuff that Dave Nyhart mentioned with uh, the brown trout in our limestone valleys. And then bringing in the, the priority threes, um, the importance of, of showing this and all the stream um, segments across the Commonwealth is every one of those has a score and is, is rankable. So since 2016, our staff have been using this geo decision tool in cooperation with our uh, feasibility flow chart um, to advance new habitat projects. And I just wanted to note that about 60% of our staff time currently is, is spent on wild trout waters. Going through our current uh, project partners and focus areas, we're currently working um, extensively with North Central Pennsylvania Conservancy. They're focusing on um, 14 counties in the north central part of the state. We're focusing, uh, working with Western Pennsylvania Conservancy in the western half of the state, um, Wildlands Conservancy out in the Lehigh Valley, as well as many county conservation districts, um, trout unlimited groups, um, chapters as well um, as the state chapter and uh, sportsmen's groups across the Commonwealth. These are our projects that were completed from 2014 to 2016 as we were transitioning into um, this new prioritization um, approach and the distribution across the Commonwealth. So to summarize things, um, historically we were um, looking at a, a first come first serve kind of multi-year wait list um, approach um, very reactive approach. Currently we're using a, a data-driven needs type approach. Um, the current prioritization process um, uses a data-driven tool that allows us to, to take a proactive approach. We can, we can take a look at those um, top 3.6 percent of, of streams across the Commonwealth and be proactive and move forward with projects on those streams. We can also take a reactive approach if we have um, pots of funding that, that come to us, we can now prioritize within any geographic area across the, the Commonwealth, whether it's a county, whether it's a, um, a, a sub-watershed. And we can also direct internal and partner-funded projects towards PFBC identified priorities. And um, Nate Regal, who's going to be speaking next, and a perfect example of that is we're able to prioritize um, streams within Bureau of Forestry um, districts across the Commonwealth and, and give them a better direction of where they might want to take a look at uh, doing habitat improvement work on streams. With that, I'll... <coughs> <coughs>